Welcome back, boys and girls. Tons of Kratom news now, and we're going to talk about some of the uh, conflicting issues among all of them. It is rather a confusing time. It's almost like the lost decade, at least from my perspective. There's a lot of legal uh, uncertainty in this arena, and we're going to talk about um, some of the designations for Kratom. We're going to talk about exactly why I feel like there's so much confusion trying to outla uh, outline for you guys exactly what I'm seeing. And um, hopefully, you know, things will work out. But based on the current situation, I I have my doubts. So my name is Mike. If you've been here before, you know the spiel. Today's Daily Dose is brought to you by grassstore.com. As always, save 40%. Use the code daily at checkout. And there's more links down below for you. If you want to help support the channel, just know it means a lot to me. So as you see all this news about Kratom here, and every day there's these um, supposed deaths. We don't really know one way or the other. Maybe more information comes out over time uh, and kind of can substantiate whether or not it was just Kratom. I've been reading a lot of uh, articles uh, from the medical community about Kratom as well, trying to understand uh, what they're seeing through the study of Mitrigine 9. Um, and it is kind of split. There are some that are advocates, some that aren't, some that are seeing uh, very specific symptoms like heart arrhythmia and cardiac arrest. Don't know if it's just relating to Kratom. Don't know if it has other factors to play into it as well. If someone's not entirely healthy, maybe that is something to consider. But nonetheless, uh, I see a great confusion between all of it. So if you didn't know, dietary supplements fall under the designation of food. So what did the FDA say a number of years ago? Kratom is not for human consumption. Therefore, it's not a dietary supplement. Therefore, it's not. Um, it doesn't fall under that specific designation. Beyond that, importation is illegal too. So I saw this and I was reading, I'm like, my goodness, this is fucking scary. This person who runs the brand Eden's Ethnos uh, Botanicals um, just got charged uh, two years in prison. It was a plea deal. He accepted it, but it was for money laundering and the importation, illegal importation of Kratom. And that's um, pretty damn scary too. It is illegal to bring Kratom into the country, and yet it is legal in most states to uh, have it, sell it, consume it. So this is where this legal clarity can be so helpful. I feel the number one place that we should tackle is the importation. Like, fix that first and continue pushing with the efforts on the Kratom Consumer Protection Act. If you didn't know, there's a little pieces of news here around Kratom. So Nevada wants to ban it, and that's coming up on a bill. Um, Florida just implemented age restrictions, making it 21 plus, and Louisiana is trying to ban it too. This is, um, you know, this is where a lot of confusion uh, tends to uh, really make it difficult for anyone to know what is right, what is wrong. I mean, me personally, I'm struggling with it. I see this and I say, fuck, dude, these government agencies are so chaotic. <laughs> In an age where information moves at the speed of light and yet uh, there's no fluidity between uh, gov governing bodies, where I, I would think there would be plenty of the sharing of ideas and information and kind of gaining some consensus, but FDA has their position, DEA has their position, um, and the list goes on. And there's probably so many more. Uh, the bottom line is there's benefit, right? If you if you use Kratom, you know there's benefit. If you have used it in the past and uh, it's worked, then you know there's benefits. For those that maybe use it too much, you know that that may be an issue and you got to stop. This is where the FDA has made it clear it has potential for abuse. Like many things, I feel like many things do have the potential for abuse. And we see that in a society like ours where there's abundance. So that is not really an argument, I feel like. 
In any case, education is the most important if we want to tackle the abuse of any substance or anything. So that's a good place to begin. Beyond that, as I look at the the landscape, I say, cool, you have the importation problem, you have people being prosecuted for, for Kratom, then you have these deaths that, that are really kind of uh, far and few between, and that's that's a good thing. I'm not complaining about that, but um, we don't have enough information there, and I don't know if uh, we'll ever really get more details around these deaths. It's just the narrative is being pushed so hard. Kratom is under scrutiny, and that people are dying, and that's pretty much all we're getting out of these news articles. We're not really being told anything else, and that um, and that's not fair. I feel like if you're if you're publishing an article from a professional point of view, it should be very clear and concise and accurate, not um, not biased in any shape or form. But that's not what I always see. It's hardly what I see uh, when I'm doing a lot of reading on these things. So the again, the landscape is on shaky ground. You may have heard of the Kratom. Prote- uh, the Kratom Consumer Protection Act, and that's kind of slow moving. Some states adopt it, some states don't, and I don't know what the legislative process is to adopt such a thing. But if you didn't know, Nevada did have that enacted by their board of pharmacy members, um, but all of a sudden now they're moving to ban it. Why? I don't know. I couldn't really find much um, on it, and it's disheartening to say the least. So many of you may have experienced this, but I certainly experience it as I talk to many, many people every single month, hundreds and hundreds of people. It's rather difficult to hear these stories of, you know, being on pain medications for such a long time. And if you're one of these people, you have seen that the mechanisms of control at the distributions are being enhanced. The amount you're prescribed is being reduced, um, sometimes out of nowhere, and you're just expected to cope with it. Many people turn to Kratom when this happens, and it's adequate enough to kind of bring a little stability and comfort to one's life. If we begin to eliminate these two, what do you have? Let's be real. Most people do turn to street drugs, far more dangerous and deadly. That's with certainty. What can we do? What do you think? Leave them down below. 